ridiculous. May we jump straight to the ridiculous chat room. I love you guys. How are you? Um, <clears throat> it's hard to pick which, what is the most ridiculous thing. <clears throat> um, but, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta say, uh, anything that says Lauren Boebert and special announcement, I gotta say, I'm there. It's gotta be good. It's gotta, and, and I, I know what you're thinking, Hal, it's, it's not gonna be that great. It's probably just gonna be like her you know, in a little podcasting studio with a stupid backdrop and like one plant trying to like wear like her best sort of newscaster outfit to holy shit. Um, yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're exactly right. She knows she's going to lose. So she is looking forward to the next chapter in her career, okay? And so Lauren Boebert has a special announcement and it should come as no surprise that um, she is going to be, um, I, I suppose, like moronic, moronic eye candy. That's a good picture though. I do think that, that's a good freeze frame. That's a keeper, I guess. I would keep that. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, am I doing it right? Um, it's weird. She keeps looking like that. She look like, uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Um, yeah. So, uh, she's apparently, I, I don't know if this is, I have not watched this. I'm not going to watch it without you. I'm not going to do this to myself fucking twice. Um, and it's not an OnlyFans cause it's on, uh, Rumble. So, <laughs> This is, and we won't watch all of it. I don't think we could stand it. Um, but it is a special announcement on what her future might be. So here we go. I've, we're, we're just doing a test run. So this will be uh, kind of a shorter one. But in the future, I, I expect to bring on guests and have you engage with them as well. So you could hear directly from other mm. members of Congress. Oh, fabulous. It's going to, so if I'm to understand this, is this sort of a, what's the word for it? A, a podcast kind of, I mean, I hear the kids are pod, like nobody really has one and it's, you know, only the elite of the elite get to have one. Um, and I, it, you know, I, I, I think, you know, usually most people think of it as something that like a, some asshole comedian does or somebody who runs for office and then fail. Oh, Sorry. Men and women who are fighting each and every day for you, who are principled, who actually govern like they campaign. What a concept. Um, oh, you mean they, did they, I'm sorry, did they campaign to not actually accomplish anything and to just basically like complain all the time? And, uh, you know, this is just a way for you to connect with representatives throughout the United States. I can act, you know, I can actually call my representatives, right? I can write letters and stuff. I can actually vote too. That's a, you know, it's a great way to connect with your, uh, with your elected representatives is to participate in, uh, the process by which they are elected or <laughs> in deference to you, young lady, not. I, you can't vote for all of them, but when they're in Washington, DC, like it or not, we are voting for you. Uh, not. There are some who don't. Don't vote in your best interests each and Yeah, yeah, they're called the Freedom Caucus, I'm aware. Every day, but I like to surround myself with the firebrands, with the freedom fighters. The, the feet, the feet, the feet worshipers, um, the firebrands, you mean, just say fucking Matt Gates, or can you not say him because he's as skeevy as your ex? And uh, my colleagues in the Freedom Caucus who... Who uh, don't include... Uh, are are like down a player, right? Didn't they lose one person? Didn't he drop? Didn't they? Didn't they kick one of the fuckers to the curb this week? Hold on, I gotta look it up. I think, I think it was on like uh, weren't they? Yeah, weren't they jettisoning uh people? Um, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll find it, but the um. Yeah, they, they, like, I guess they, 
called him into the office and and told him don't come back um let's see i'll, I'll end up okay cuz like ken bucks dropping out that's different but it was a, a another one i'll figure out who it is does anybody know who it was it, yeah um bo burnt um <laughs> The, uh, let's see, um, freedom, Olympus, um, member, um, Jeff, um, right behind freedom Congress members look to some in U.S. Oh yeah, here it is. Randy Weber got kicked out. Um, who is like, I, and I think it's, I, it's weird because I couldn't tell whether it was like because he was Trumpy or because he wasn't. This, this, okay, so um, burp, burp, burp. where do we go? There we go. Continue. Um, uh, Randy Weppert, uh, uh, Republican of Friendswood. <laughs> Is that like uh, for the village where everyone has a friend with benefits? Was kicked out of the hard right Freedom Caucus last week during a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Bob Good. He requested with Weber to address his sparse attendance to weekly meetings members are expected to attend. First reported by Politico, Weber said Good asked him if he had lost interest in the caucus. The Texas Republican said it wasn't lack of interest, it was a dislike for the burn the house down procedural tactics the rightmost flank has come to be known for. In response, Weber said Good told him he'd uh, need to reapply for admission back into the caucus. Again, this is this whole like like bureaucracy for bu bureaucracy. Just kick, just tell him he's not fucking welcome. If you don't like it, fuck off. It's the Freedom Caucus. Like, what do you mean reapply? So they can re-vote on you? Jesus. Say you're fired. Where the, uh, in the, aren't they the party of Trump? Jesus. It was a shock because I've disagreed with some of the Freedom Caucus chairs, but I've never had them tell me uh, uh, you need to get out of the Freedom Caucus. Good to not respond to a request for comment. Weber said he still hadn't decided whether to reapply. I'm going to wait, give it some time and see. That's a no. Weber uh, was a Freedom Caucus member for nearly a decade. He said he was, uh, he's seen the group shift from being party rabble rousers to playing a major hand in holding up budget fights and forcing unprecedented speaker election next year. The rightmost flank holds more weight now given House Republicans' razor thin majority. By the way, the f does anybody else find it fucking weird that the, there's a rightmost flank to the Freedom Caucus? Like, Jesus, how, how right wing do you have to be to be in it in the first fucking place? That, that's how divided the Republicans are, that there's a split in the fucking loonies? <laughs> Seriously. Like, there are some crazies too crazy for the other crazies? Whatever. The right like holds more weight now, blah, blah, blah. Weber said Good had been checking in with Cox members uh, who had missed previous weekly meetings, but Weber is the only known member to have been removed altogether. Weber said he had no interaction with Bob Good beyond the Freedom Caucus weekly meetings until he was called into his office. Weber said he believes Good had an agenda and removed him from the caucus unilaterally. Right. Which he did. Sure. What was your first clue? That he asked you to leave and told you you'd have to rejoin? Yes, yeah, splitters. Are they, yes, yeah, is this the Freedom Caucus or the People's Freedom Caucus? That's the People's Freedom Caucus over there. Splitter! Uh, Weber said he believes it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he said the clash over the strategy with good and perhaps some bad blood left from the presidential Republican primary. Weber is a staunch supporter of President Donald Trump. And good initially supported Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, led the caucus here to single him out. Wait, what? Uh, hold on. That's what that is. Does that Weber is the Trumpy who thinks that the right flank of the caucus has gone too far and is ineffective because they're basically like calamitous burn the house down types. And good is part of that, but was for DeSantis and still has leftover like burn over DeSantis with, I, this is so fucking weird. I have no, like, it, 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 it can't be just me, right? Please, but ch chat room, can anybody, Explain to me that fucking overlap. That's bizarre. It's fucking bizarre. Yeah, how, how right wing can you be before you fall off the edge of the flat earth? Um, yeah, well, I mean, let, let's understand. There are no edges to the flat earth. You just reach the outer rem, realm and then you have to fight past the black helicopters to what's really heaven. And that's over the mountains. <laughs> Do you, 
Do I have to tell everybody how flat Earth works every time? Um, I like, yeah, we have to. We've dealt with like, uh, like the hyper left crowd who want to burn it all down, the TYT types, and some of the, uh, you know, the sort of squad adjacent folks that are like that. But this just makes no fucking sense. Like the the infighting that you're you don't go far enough in the theory, but you go too far in support of Trump, but not far enough in support of his political will. I it's just odd. Like that's just so fucking strange. Anyways, they they uh, they lost one, and then um, Ken Buck is stepping down into the month, which will make it way harder uh, for this dipshit to get elected. Stand for your values each and every day. We stand up to the uniparty, the establishment to leave. Okay, first of all, every time I pause, you can't really tell, but uh, the, the, we're getting some really like Fox News kind of angle on this. You can see her knee. She's wearing a sh relatively short skirt and she's wearing, like whoever's filming this for her, she's sitting there. There's no table in front of her desk. You just see in the top of her naked knee it's fine. Again, I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. Wherever, wherever the fuck you want. But don't lecture me on family fucking values and then, you know, go all Fox and Friends. Like, dead center, sitting there with your knee showing, letting everybody know that's watching you're wearing a short skirt and that you might basic instinct at some point. Leadership. Wait. We aren't moved by attack ads. We aren't moved uh, by the persuasion campaigns that they try to force us to submit to. Uh yeah, you are. You're going to be moved right out of your fucking seat. You were already moved out of your goddamn district where you were going to lose to a Democrat. We are moved by policy and what is best for you. The Which apparently is no policy because... You voted against the Infrastructure Act. I don't know why. You know that none of them have been able to explain that. American people. So thank you all so much for joining me today. And uh, if you want to do more of these in the future, let. What we're all, what we're all taking turns. If you want to do more of these, no. If you, it's your fucking show, lady. I already have a show. I'm not doing. What kind of commie bullshit is this? Also, can I just say, it, it could could we could you just be lamer with the fucking rumble brick right here and the rumble mug just off camera? C can you at least fucking pretend that this isn't just a, a a right wing media money grift? Let me know. Uh, I want to hear your feedback on this, and uh, I want. Okay. How about that? Is that is that? Direct enough to give you um, the link to donate on the Rumble site. This is a brand new feature that. Man, that didn't take long. A minute and 27 seconds. Well, young lady, I, I think you could teach me a thing or two because it takes me forever to tell everybody to support the show and e even to just subscribe, and that's free. But meanwhile, a minute, 27 seconds in, she's like, hit the donate button. Um, yeah, I got a grandkid. We are testing out. Look, it's campaign season. What do you mean we're testing out? Who's, who the fuck is we? R Rumble is testing? Oh, we're not doing the whole thing, Dana. Don't worry. We are in an election year. Really? Gosh. Well, I... I guess it would be a bad time to fire everybody at the RNC, right? And I have a very aggressive primary that we are certainly going to talk about because guess what? The, what? The Uniparty stepped in and tried to rig an election. So we are definitely... <laughs> rig an election? How? By, by having someone run against you that's more popular? Can I just say that for the record, all this being ridiculous aside, that if you want an example of quote unquote a uniparty setup, it's where you have safe districts where it, you know, somebody runs, they guarantee who's going to run against you. Wasn't that the complaint about the, the DNC and fucking super delegates and all that kind of shit internally? 
like on their own parties have an agenda they have a platform that they want to do people want to like um you know either carve off a slice of that or wedge themselves in the middle or take over it that's that's going to take work because I, it might surprise you that the word established is, uh, you know will be used in, <laughs> to describe it but people established a party for a particular set of like political goals they would like to see met and if somebody comes along and is just like you know what as a you mind if I finish that? Like it's like they just walk up while you're in your mid meal and you're like, I'm on a specific diet trying to help my buddy. Like, yeah, yeah, let me have these. Like that's that's what she she lived on that. She counted on that. Uniparty. How do you rig an election? How do you say the Uniparty when a Democrat's kicking your ass in an area that you won? Barely. Definitely going to talk about that, but if you want more updates from me, text Nah, I, I really don't. The word freedom to eight zero three zero. It's spelled F R E with a with a line over the top of it. Um, you could do that by holding down the key until the options come up and use that, and then D U M B B. There's two B's for Bobes. Six. That's freedom to eight zero three zero six. Babadaga. After all, that's what we're here for. Money, <laughs> donations. A, a contribution in kind by Rumble. We're here for freedom. My my number one job is to secure your rights and to grope your date. No matter how many children are in the theater, if you want to get a little cock time, you should be able to do it. No matter what show you're there to see, whether it's it's fucking the Wiggles or it's fucking Ka, the 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 dirtiest Cirque show that they have, which is still pretty tame. Keep you free. Everything. Free from the constraints of your zipper. Falls under that directive. Uh, so the prime directive. So uh, we we have a lot of uh, uh, legislative work that's going on. We're gonna we're gonna get into that. Um, but oh, no doubt. One thing that happened really recently uh, that I am so honored. Did she just one cheek sneak us? I mean, it was bad enough. Minute and a half, she's into asking for donations. And then she fucking one cheek sneaks us. Look at this. Watch uh, replay. So, uh, we we have a lot of uh, uh, legislative work that's going on. We're gonna we're gonna get into that. Um, but one thing that happened really recently uh, that I am so honored to have. See, look at that. I, I I didn't hear it the first time. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was probably the chair, probably just the leather chair. It's it, like it's so hard to like recreate <laughs> that sound. Received is uh, the complete and total endorsement from President Donald J. Trump. I am so honored to have his support. He has been an ally and a friend since uh, before I arrived in Congress. Uh-huh. When I was still just one of Epstein's girls. He is an amazing America first man. And, you know. An amazing America first man. And by America first, she means that's the first chip that he throws on the table when he's playing cards. He's like, that's the first thing he's willing to give up. America first. So he used to have a really nice life. Uh, he, he No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He was on his third wife. His show was being canceled. He was a, the laughing stock of New York. He um, put it all on the line for you, for me, for us. No, he didn't. He, he was counting on the American people and the fact that he was president to salvage him from the stack of problems he'd created in his wake. America. He's a businessman. He's a family man. <laughs> Look, okay. Having three wives doesn't make you a family man. You don't get triple the credit because you have three wives and kids with all of them. That's not... And, and also, for the record, there is no such thing as a, quote, family man who buries his kid's mother on a golf course. You fucking clown. I, I gotta say, if, if anything takes a sledgehammer to the concept of family values, it's burying your ex-wife, the mother of your adult children, on a fucking golf course with no headstone. No 
There's not a fucking statue to her. So everybody who goes by knows what a great mom she was. Not a fucking little mausoleum piece that holds her fucking ashes. So there's a point of respect. He buried her in the fucking dirt. And you can't even see the marker until you're standing on it with one of your fucking golf cleats. Get out of here. He is an America first man. Right now, we are in an election where you have... By the way, great video so far. High quality. Kudos, Rumble, on the choppy video. ...a choice. The two candidates on the... Pres Actually, you know what? Somebody somebody probably tipped someone at Rumble to, to jag up her feed just so there would be... It would freeze frame on her going... Probably bongholio. ...presidential election... Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden. Come on, Bobes. Let your body move to the music. Shitty, shitty bandwidth. Come on, Bobes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you've lived under both of those administrations. I, uh, for the record, I have those problems, but I do this from my fucking office in the downstairs of my house. Like, I, you know, that's my way of saying uh, basement, but it's not a basement because it. It's ground level, but you know what I'm talking about. They would call it a basement. I would not. But uh, just for the record, I have those issues, but I'm not at the fucking Rumble Studios next door to their fucking servers. Because this is not, I, in so, let's, uh, let's look. This is not. He's a businessman. He's a family man. Yeah. This is not, this is not a, a playback issue on my end. This is what she put out. Sorry, I didn't mean to have her on screen and then say put out. I didn't mean to say she put out when with Bob's on. That's that's uncalled for. I think it's wrong. <laughs> Sorry. He is an America first man. Right now we are in an election where you have a choice. The mm -hmm. two candidates on the presidential election, mm -hmm. Donald J. Trump. Oh, so she's going to do the real news. And Joe Biden, well, you've lived under both of those administrations. Uh huh. So which one was your life better under? J clearly Joe Biden. Clearly. I mean, let's just, let's just go for minority unemployment. It's actually moving closer to uh, the standard unemployment figure, whereas it was in a stasis in parallel all during Trump. So the narrowing of the gap means that we're moving towards a more equitable job base in the country. That's a good thing. So even though I, as, as a pasty white uh, Scottish, Irish, and English fucker, um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of ne'er-do-wells rolling through different villages deciding whose wife was theirs in my family's deep history, let me tell you. Um, a lot of, lot of prima nocta, unfortunately, in my background. And even with that, that wouldn't benefit me in directly. But as an American, it benefits me greatly. Because when, because again, America is, is the only country in the world where it doesn't show up on anybody's 23 and me. That's a beautiful thing. And nor should, oh, Templeton, merci beaucoup, Dorian. No, thank you for the super chat. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Lovely. Great to see you back on air, Hal. Happy hump day. Thank you, Templeton. Uh, a fair is a veritable smorgasbord. Orgasbord. Orgasbord. Um, all right. So, bless you. Um, and thanks, everybody, for the support today, by the way. Uh, thank the, See this little thing that goes by right over here? Thanks for the likes and the, the yeah, Ramona. For, thank you for the support. Just said support. There's, thanks for the gifted subs, Kitty K. The lovely appreciate applause to the lovely people and i hope you appreciate that i made it kind of like three-dimensionally never mind i tinker that's what i do under which administration was the border more secure were you well i biden's deporting more people than trump did and but for covid trump's numbers would have looked exactly like biden's as far as people interacting at the border also we're stopping more fentanyl now than we ever did 
So obviously, a bunch of it got through. Otherwise, what the fuck was killing that 100,000 people that happened in the last year of Trump? Seized being the thing. Thank you, Barbara. You, uh, not. This is good. It's high quality stuff. Is Bongholio personally Afraid. running this broadcast? It seems like it is. Yeah. <laughs> Just see him in the back going. <laughs> Just wires. <laughs> of illegals coming into your community and killing your loved ones. <laughs> yeah, that's, it happens, you know. We, at, now we're so used to it, you know. They just, that's what's happening. Just everywhere you look. I don't know anybody who hasn't been killed by an illegal. Um, and, you know, we're all just waiting our turn. Which administration had uh, the, the border secure well, obviously not the dude who built a fucking wall. That that made it worse. Again, border under Obama, better than it was under Trump. Border under Biden, uh, stopping more fentanyl than under Trump. The only problem seems to be the wall. And, How about Carl uh, Frischow winning Bobo he's not in the, he's in, he's in DC he's in the, that district. I like Carl, but he did, he's not going to move to Colorado for that. And there's already a good Democrat running against. He you know, running had a, a a grasp on human trafficking. And <laughs> yeah, you bet your ass he did. <laughs> if and if he ever didn't understand it, he could always call Matt Gates personally. He had a grasp on human trafficking. Of course, he fucking had a grasp on human trafficking. He had Jeffrey Epstein. On speed dial, you dizzy fuck. What? Donald Trump, every home he owns was within a, a, a 10 minute cab ride of a home that Jeffrey Epstein owned. What the fuck? And Colorado wasn't in the top five states for human trafficking in America. And Colorado wasn't number two for fentanyl overdoses, fentanyl poisoning. Well, that's President Trump's administration. And Joe Biden, with the stroke of his pen, opened up our southern borders and allowed this invasion. It's will. Wait, hold on. Colorado is number two that quickly? Okay, let's just take it at face value. Now, this is bullshit, clearly. But let's just take it at face value what you're saying is true. That uh, Joe Biden is the president of the entire United States. And if he opened the southern border, arguably, it would just go wherever the populations were and the money is. Right? I mean, Colorado's a decent-sized state. What's the... Um, hold on. There you go. Fewer people in Colorado than in Los Angeles County. And uh, and yet, it's number two. And it's not even on the fucking border. So let me just go out on a limb and say, maybe, just maybe, it's not the fault of the president who would be to blame kind of in a wash over the problems that the entire country had, in theory. And, and if it's acutely bad in your state, it might be your fucking fault. Maybe, just maybe, pass the fucking border bill, which has in it, one of the biggest things it has is sensor equipment that can see, it can look at chemical compounds through a fucking truck without even having to open the goddamn thing up. That can stop fentanyl from coming across in the shipping containers, in the box, in the actual trucks that are coming across. You fucking asshole. It's, maybe it's you is my point. Willful, it's deliberate. This is why we impeach. No, it isn't. Secretary Mayorkas. This is. No, it isn't. Why I introduced articles of impeachment for Joe Biden and his. No, it isn't. You did it because there, you, you've got to gin up a certain level of your like QAnon followers. And you've got to show your like, at, like insane Koreshian loyalty to Donald Trump. Otherwise he won't. Like he'll, you're too short for him to, he'll like, he'll look right past you to Melania number five. Dereliction of duty at the Southern border to keep you. See what I mean? Like somebody is, somebody's freeze framing this. They're like, what would drive up her numbers with our crowd? Well, how about every time she DSLs, we freeze frame? 
safe to uphold our immigration laws. And, uh, you know, that that vote, I forced every Republican uh, to, to vote on that inquiry and to get it sent over to committee so we can actually do the work of impeaching Joe Biden. Uh- yeah, but you're not going to pass the actual border bill that would materially affect the actual security of the border. You're not going to pass that. You want, let me get this straight, uh, because you hate big government and wasted taxpayer dollars on uh, fishing expeditions and uh, and ridiculous committees and the like. You decide instead of passing the border bill, which would spend money directly on hiring people and setting up more technology at the border to stop the kind of the, the scourge, as Trump calls it, coming across the border. Instead of doing that, you want an investigation, a committee, a, a, basically a blue ribbon jerk off. Great. There's a lot more that we're, we're doing to under, uh, to, uh, expose the corrupt. She almost said undercut. Did you see that? Uphold our immigration laws. And, uh, you know, that, that vote, I forced every Republican, uh, to, to vote on that Listen. inquiry and to get it sent over to committee so we can actually do the work of impeaching Joe Biden. Uh, there's a lot more that we're, we're doing to under, uh, to, <laughs> oh, oh. She almost said undercut. Oh, it was uh, so nice. Uh, expose the corruption in the. <laughs> well, or or well, you would think you'd have to actually find some to expose it. Biden family, we're having a hearing on Hunter Biden next week. Uh, but again, you've lived under both administrations. When where was your life better? My- <laughs> yeah. What, how do you feel now versus, I don't know, March of 2020? What do you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the president uh, talking about pass the border bill so we can fix the border and having already passed an infrastructure bill in the Rescue Act and pushing us towards a, you know green technology and away from fossil fuels, not just for the, the, the environmental reasons, but for the national security aspects of it, you know, uh, being... Uh, respectful of other human beings and 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 trying to you know mitigate multiple disasters in a in a thoughtful way worldwide. You, you want that, or do you want some dude suggesting you stick a fucking light bulb up your ass and drink bleach to cure COVID? But what? I mean, six of one, half dozen of another. Mine was better under President Trump, and I am proud to have received his endorsement. He knows that he needs his A game. His seriously, I feel like I'm watching a, a like a film strip of the first 20 minutes of a porn that I'm totally gonna lose interest in. A team, whenever he gets back to the White House, fighting alongside of him, serving the American people, with- fighting alongside of him, both of us di- trying desperately to read things and understand them, you know, in the fight with him going, what does that word mean? How does this even work? Who are these people? Why am I here? What are we even doing this for? Let's go golf. With a heart like his to put you first to secure. A heart like his, what, caked in fucking Cheetos? Good Lord, lady. His, at this point, his heart looks like a, like a wet pile, like somebody crumpled a bunch of white castles together, sprayed them pink, and left them on a windowsill. Cure you to help you to prosper, uh, to bring back American energy development. Uh, so, American energy development. What are we? What are we? We're developing new ways to use oil. Because clearly, you're not talking about like you know, battery vehicles like EVs because you don't have a EV battery plant in your district. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene does. We can be energy secure, so we could be energy dominant. We could export freedom to our allies across the globe. (laughs) Yeah, we tried that in, in, in Iraq, I think. Other than funding two sides of a war. Oh, she means, she means, uh, Israel and Gaza. She means that we're giving um, Iron Dome and material support for uh, Israel. And by feeding Palestinians, that's the same as, you know, because you're filling the bellies of killers. And and so 
it's better to just let the kids starve because they're just going to grow up to be monsters anyways. That's what she means, you know. You just, it, just, just ask yourself, what would Jesus say? And then think the exact opposite. By purchasing energy products from Russia and sending your tax dollars to Ukraine. And We're not buying energy from Russia. What the fuck are you talking about? Huh? Instead, we could have peace through strength. <laughs> How, what's peace through, through strength? Uh, back off and let Russia do whatever the fuck they want to Ukraine? That's strength to you? You know, I, I I used to think, you know, it's there's been a big deal about how we've never had a president that was single. They've all been married. They've all been in long-term relationships, except for Trump, which is this kind of like, you know, fucking wet raincoat kind of, he's like, wives are like umbrellas to him, you know. Once they get damp, you just throw them in the fucking bin and grab another one on your way out. Um, the, you know, there's always this thought that somebody who's married and, and is looking to the future at least has you know, their children is looking, you know, to maintain a relationship for the kids with them is part and parcel to their kind of like the stability you would want in a in a leader. Now, I don't necessarily think that's true. And I think certainly... There are cases where a, a single president would be just fine. I do think, though, that the the monkey branch aspect of of some presidencies, like speci specifically like Trump or leaders like her, where there's just like you're just watching the collapse and the dysfunction. Even Sarah Palin, for example, where you're looking at the dysfunction of the family unit that they have together. And, you know, you know, we never blame anybody for the, like, abuse they might suffer. But if you're going back into relationships like that again and again, it might be a sign of trauma, ignorance. It might just be your kink. It, it's a myriad of reasons why you can end up in a shitty, yeah, that is a bit, sorry for the OnlyFans freeze frames, but that's from there. Um, the uh, Agreed, Scotland, we do not need another four years of fucking Trump. And you guys should kick him out, too, as soon as possible. Um... We need a gay president. We probably already had one. You mean an out gay president, but I understand. Yeah, and Pete Buttigieg is married. He would be fine. But the point I'm trying to make is not that a single, uh, that a, a married in a in a functioning long-term relationship or a single uh, president is the issue, but these folks like her and MTG arguably and Sarah Palin and certainly Donald Trump who like, you know, monkey branch between shit relationships where they're either the victim or the victimizer or take, you know, are, are just part and parcel to a toxic relationship. The idea that someone in that situation keeps making that same mistake, um, while it might be forgivable on a personal level, and, you you know, I would just say if they were your, if you did business with them, they were a, an associate at your company or something like that, you might think twice about joining them on a project, right? Because you're like, uh, they've got all this weird fucking toxic shit that always comes up. And last time we were there, she and her husband got into a fucking shouting match and she's screaming and he's screaming at the, well, we're trying to, we're in the middle of a sales thing. Like that, that kind of awkwardness, that would keep you from doing something that was kind of meaningful in your own life on a business level, much less someone who's going to actually be running the fucking country or in charge of a goddamn district, right? Because again, all that toxic shit we've heard about her and her husband that's been going on for a while all happened while her constituents were hoping she would actually do something for her district. And all she ultimately ended up doing was was scuttling shit that was going to come to her district or doing performative bullshit votes so it, that where she knew it was going to pass anyways, but she could say no to it like Rand Paul does or like some members of, of the squad will do on occasion. Where you know the money's going to come to your state. You know the money's going to come to your district. You know the bridges are going to get fixed and that kind of stuff. But you vote against it because you can say you stood on principle for it. Um, whereas if you knew it was going to fail without your vote, you would vote for it because you need the fucking money. It's only the buffer that allows you to have, what is that, like the height of fucking electoral privilege on the fucking earth where you, you've got enough of a pad where you're like, I can throw my vote away on, you know, on making myself look good, right? That That's what she does all the time. That's what, and the idea that the toxicity of her life isn't going to fold over into the toxicity of her situation, especially because she doesn't seem to be avoiding it. She went, ran straight to 
even creepier shit, right? Beetlejuice being what it is. So I'm voting for President Trump in November. Shocker. I certainly hope that you're going to as Not a chance. Well, and again, I am proud to have received his endorsement in my campaign. Um, in, in Colorado's fourth district, where I am running uh, to uh, represent, I have- Where you're running to represent? That you are running to represent? Or it's just a matter of geography? A little bit of a Freudian slip. 10 candidates uh, who are running against me, 10 opponents, and- It's a primary, dumb fuck. Sorry. Jesus Christ, it's a congressional district. And most of them have voting records. Huh? I would hope so. A, you don't? And they don't vote as they campaign. They campaign as no-nonsense conservatives, but... If <laughs> but, but they refuse to uh, vote no on my nonsense. You actually go back and look at how they vote on issues. In the state legislature, they have failing liberty scores. They're oh my god! They're not conservatives. <laughs> Gee, it's almost like they had to vote um, to get stuff actually passed that would function for the state, or that were mitigatory. They didn't. They didn't come there to fight. They came there to compromise and build and wait for it, articulate their point of view in such a way that they convince the other people that are there that their way is the better way, not the right way. Or the wrong way, but the better way, because every side of an argument can have some, especially when you're creating a program or a pilot situation where you're trying to solve a problem, will have its ups and downs, it will have its failures, it will have its successes. So, but one path will have fewer downsides and more upsides than the other, and they can successfully argue that point, as opposed to just have this fucking loyalty score, the liberty score. Um, so that Donald Trump can go, he didn't give a fuck what she votes for. She's telegenic. That's why he likes her. Jesus Christ. Have you seen his lawyer? You think he picks any of these women? God bless him on, uh, on their capability or their qualities in a particular industry or job. If you can't pass a conservative voting record, then you can't call yourself a conservative. Well, all of them had a passing score. They just didn't have a hundred percent because, uh, that's fucking nuts. You're part of the problem. You're part of the uniparty. While these folks are in Colorado talking about what they would do, could do, maybe do, want to do, I'm actually doing. I'm actually stopping anything from being done. And that's true conservatism. What I'm conserving is our energy as a country. We need to sit down and stop doing things. America is far too big and far too important in the world. We need to curtail it. We need to shut that down. The work. And I have a voting record that actually backs that up. No, you don't. You have a bunch of performative bullshit votes. So the Uniparty is trying to do everything that they can. It's the Republican Party. What the fuck do you... Again, the 10 people that are running are from... They're Republicans. I, I, look, I don't have a problem with you, like, hating rhinos and the fucking RNC and... It, Whatever, that's part, parcel to, part and parcel to your entire, like, po political, the wing of your political ideology right now. That whole side right now is fucked up and chaotic and toxic and, and the, the infighting. Or, uh, we, uh, we, I assume that. Leave me the fuck out of it. As a Democrat and as, uh, you know, on behalf of my fellow Democrats, we have nothing to do with the fucking losers you're running against. Or the fact that if I was speaking to one of them, I would say the loser they're running against. What the f Uniparty has, the Democrats don't have anything to fucking do with this. At this point, all this is boiling down to is this idiot is calling the Republican Party the Uniparty. Good Lord. To stop my candidacy, to rig the election in Colorado and- Rig it? By what? debating and and knocking on doors and doing all the shit you have to do to get elected to office. And, uh, you know, this is breaking news as of yesterday. Ken Buck's announcement. <laughs> it's good. Breaking yesterday. news. She literally broke the news. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, so her belief, I guess, is that Ken Buck is stepping down just to screw with her, as opposed to he's fucking fed up with this dump they've turned his party into. Okay was a gift to the Uniparty. The establishment 
concocted a swampy backroom deal to try to rig an election, an election that I'm winning by 25 points, for mm -hmm. forcing an unnecessary special election when the same day as the primary election in Colorado. And this will confuse voters. Well, yeah, because it, it, it and she's right there. She is. I will give her credit for this. Republicans in mass, especially the ones in her district that might vote for her, are, in fact, easily confused. They're they're uh, dopey. Silly. Uh, they are, um, uh, I mean, to the person, morons. And so, of course, they're going to be confused. In, But in defense of her uniparty issue, um, they're already confused or they wouldn't be in a booth even considering voting for you. And it will re result in a lame duck congressman on day one. And Yeah, but they can vote their conscience, right? Arguably, that person would vote, would, you know, they they could be more of a firebrand than you can afford to be, right? Because they're not, they, you know, they, they aren't, I guess, expected to run again. Leave the fourth district with no representation for more. Which, you know, honestly, it, aren't we spending too much on government? I mean, I think one of the ways, I mean, we're spending money, Bobos, we're spending money in this country we don't have. And I think one of the ways we can start to claw back some of that money, you know, and to take away the burden that we are putting on the children's of the world, the children's, one of the ways our children's future is being leveraged with money we don't have to spend. One of the ways we can do it is just eliminate certain congressional seats from existence. Just... Don't pay someone for a while. There's two ways to do that. One, there's nobody in there. Leave them without representation entirely. Or you should just work for free. Just reopen your uh, Riffle restaurant and, uh, you know, make all your money there and on your Rumble podcast and on OnlyFans. And don't charge the government for your services. Just do it as a matter of, of, of your national pride more than three months. This is absolutely unacceptable. I believe that this is selfish. Uh, we already have this extremely razor thin majority. Yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's amazing that you guys treat it like a fucking mandate. And now Ken Buck has said that he's resigning next week on March 22nd. And the fourth district will go three months without a voice in Washington. Ugh. Terrible. Why? Why must it go three months without a voice in Washington? It's terrible when it could be you, Bobes, and there could be another Democrat in Colorado. And then after you were in that district for, in Ken Buck's district for a couple of years, there could be a Democrat in that seat as well. I, I, we will all miss you, Bobes, because you are printing seats for Democrats. In DC, I believe that Colorado's fourth district deserves better. So you're, and with that, I am suspending my campaign for the, <laughs> that's why I'm stepping down right now because even my proximity, even though I'm not serving that district right now, just being close to it, I'm fucking with them. I've, this is, I, this is terrible. I will not further imperil the already very slim House uh, Republican majority by resigning my current seat in Colorado's third district and I will continue to deliver on my constituents' priorities while working hard to earn the votes of the people in the Colorado's fourth district. Who have <laughs> while I, I will, I will still try to, uh, you know, let my side piece know think they're the number one. While I'm spending more time courting my next side piece to turn it into my main squeeze, as I'm letting go of one main squeeze and moving as I'm monkey branching from one political penis to the other, as it were, I, I <laughs> made very, very clear that they are hungry for a real conservative. Who right. That's why there's 10 people running who represents their values. Who's <laughs> okay. Again, sorry about the freeze frames, but kind of not, I guess you're, you're welcome. Stands for them who will not back down. And I, Oh, so Laura Trump is running. I had no idea. I'm the only Trump-endorsed America First candidate in this race. And 
I will win the fourth district's primary election on June 25th. And of course, the general election on November 5th. So mm. Mm. No, no. Because again, they, they would not, there would not be this kind of panic amongst your party if it was a, if it was game, set, match. If they really thought she was going to win, I'm dead serious. They don't give a fuck. If they thought she could bounce over and then win that district pretty easily, they wouldn't do any of this shit that she's alleging they're doing to protect the district or run somebody that can lock down the district for the Republicans. They wouldn't be scrambling like this if they if they thought she was a fucking shoe in. So I appreciate all of you and your help, but this is me telling you I'm not going anywhere. And, and you can tell because I'm on Rumble. I am not going to put my constituents in the third district in a bind, leaving them also without representation by well resigning. I'm going to continue on to the primary in the fourth district. And uh, the, the Uniparty. Uh, uh, but if you went, if you win, the, if you won the primary, wouldn't you have to step down anyways? You can't run for two offices at the same time. Right? If she wins the primary, she's got to anyways. Lord almighty. They can have their special election. Congratulations. Put in your Ukraine first candidate. I don't really care. It's going to be a place you kind of holder do. for six months. Uh, but at least there will be someone to help us keep our majority. A Republican. Right. But uh, uh, according to you, somebody that will actually vote for Ukraine funding. Republican will win that special election and they can sit. More than likely that person who's Ukraine first that you call him, which is really just somebody who's America first in reality, as opposed to this m fucking bumper sticker you made up. There for six months and feel important or whatever it is they may do. Uh, but yeah, fucking Republicans, you know, I hear you, sister. That's the thing, right? We are going to continue. And on June 25th, we will win the primary, go on to win the general election and serve alongside President Trump in his next, uh, in his, in his next, uh, term. Really? He's going to, what, make you a cabinet official? As president of the United States. And you know what? The next four years are going to be even better than his first four. He well, the last four have been, so that's not surprising. Um, and of course they will, because Joe Biden's going to be president. Has had so much experience in, uh, draining the swamp and he knows. <laughs> Uh huh. What? So he could meet the alligators face to face? Exactly how deep the swamp is. And he. Right. And, and, and decided what? He likes it that way? He knows when you try to drain the swamp, well, these creatures, they start biting back. Mm hmm. Do they? And we are seeing that as well. And that's why there are many of us MAGA America first candidates. First of all, wait a, wait a, fuck, wait a fucking second. All right, I'm done with this anyways. This is fucking boring. But um, the, uh, your argument is, is the Uniparty is running a bunch of people against you for this district in an attempt to protect the swamp. When the vast majority of the people that are running against her aren't, she's, I'm pretty sure she's the only one from D.C. The only one who's actually a D.C. politician. The rest of them are all state reps or people in the fucking state. How are they part of the swamp? Is Colorado a fucking swamp state now? I, you're, if you're running to stay in D.C., aren't you the swamp? Jesus Christ, why don't you roll in, do whatever the fuck you wanted to do, go boom, I nailed it, bye. <laughs> right? Uh, who are here to be in the fight with him. They're All right. It's not a fight. Grow the fuck up. I'm, I'm so, I'm getting increasingly bored with the idea of it being a fighty fight fight. Um, real quick, I'm going to jump over to something else. By the way, hit the like if you could. Thank you guys for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all the support. Uh, the patrons, Templeton, everybody who's supporting the show. Um, I, it brings a tear to my eye more often than I can mention even, um, that you guys support the show and that it's a thing I had a, right before the show today, um, cause I couldn't do a morning show. I, I 
uh, had to bump up a, a podcast interview that I did um, with, uh, and during it, we just started getting like talking about, and this, cause this is what I always end up talking about, but I, I just started talking about like why I started doing the show again and, um, uh, and why it feels so good to do. And A, it's because I feel like I contribute. It's a nice to feel like you're contributing. Um, you know what I mean? Where you're doing some good. And it's a good outlet for me to be, you know, a clowny asshole. So that's fun too. You know, it's, a, you've, it's nice to find a, a hook for your coat, as it were, in the world. And uh, But at the same time, like, I, I mentioned that occasionally I'll be, you know, throughout the day or something, I'll, you know, I'll get a message from somebody that goes, Hey, you reached a milestone on your uh, on your subscribers or something because I'm in the middle of doing something or researching or fucking reading PDFs all goddamn day, and um, and you know, and a lot of people, you know, went or they'll watch the show later, and I'll get a Venmo or something like that, and somebody will go here, and it's just it's very touching, like, and Summer will tell you, like, occasionally my phone will go, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> and she's like. Somebody was somebody nice to you again. I'm like yes. So, anyways, love you guys. Uh, please subscribe. We're at 66.8. I almost feel bad we didn't dangle at 666 for a while, but we'll get to 666,000 eventually. But we got to clear that hundred thousand mark because that's really the force multiplier. So, please subscribe if you watch. Just do it. We can't see you. We don't know you're in there. Don't worry about it. It's not. It doesn't spy back. It's not TikTok. You're fine. So, anyways. Love you guys. 